Because of your bravery and heroism. Yep. Your intrepid resolve. That's me, all right. And your steadfastness in the face of danger. You betcha. I now grant you an accolade. Uh, what's that? An accolade is a special type of reward. Can I sell it? No. How much gold is it worth? Well, none. It isn't an item, but an accolade can take many forms. It could be an improvement to one of your abilities, knowledge of a new skill, or language, or even a special power. Does that mean I can cast Fireball now? Ugh. Good morning, everyone. Just a couple of quick announcements before I get into the rest of the video. You can skip ahead to 152 if you'd like to jump right in. First of all, the MCDM RPG is moving forward with a pre-release version available to backers expected in August, right after Gen Con. Once I have my copy, I'll be scouring it for ideas as my players and I develop the world of Ambrosia for our duality, Blessings and Curses campaign, so stay tuned for those videos. I'd also like to give a shout out to Spartan Bodhi, who originally voiced the announcer and gladiators in my A Dot on the Map Gladiator Arena video. I was able to join him for his new campaign, Fireside Fables, during one of their interlude episodes, which breaks away from the adventures of the player characters to focus on wars and conflicts in the campaign world. You can find a link to Fireside Fables in the description, and I'll post a link to this episode once it's available. And now, back to your regularly scheduled video. More than two decades ago, I played an online game called City of Heroes. While the game was heavily combat-based, there was another aspect that interested me far more. It was a game mechanic known as badges, and while this mechanic has been used in other games before and since, this was where I was introduced to it. Badges were simply collectible rewards that could be earned for exploring the city, learning its history, defeating various enemies, completing specific missions, and finishing a wide range of other tasks. While the only benefit of these badges was to give your character a title to announce that they had earned that particular badge, there were a handful of extra special badges that did provide an in-game boost. These were known as accolades. In City of Heroes, accolades were earned by collecting a variety of badges from disparate categories that still had some overlying theme. In Dungeons & Dragons and other role-playing games, this can be simulated with a series of side quests tied to one another, but separate from the main plot of your campaign. However, you'll first need to introduce the accolade in some way within the game. In my Unrest campaign, the party found a book at the end of their first dungeon, the Ancient Dwarven Outpost, which revealed an equally ancient Dwarven Empire deeper in the Underdark. One excerpt from the book told of the Hotchberg Pilgrimage, a trek made by devout dwarves of this empire to honor their gods. The pilgrimage involved visiting three shrines dedicated to Dwarven heroes of old, dropping a coin in the Wishing Well at the gates of Hotchberg, and defeating an enemy in honorable combat within the Hotchberg Arena. As I mentioned in my video on Advantage books, you can use old tomes and dusty grimoires to provide your players with information on an accolade you have planted in your world, allowing them to choose how and when they want to pursue it. Other methods are glyphs carved into dungeon walls, spoken prophecies, messages from the gods themselves, or whatever other methods you can contrive. The point of introducing these accolades and their associated tasks is to give your party of adventurers information without pressuring them into completing it immediately, if at all. This should be a tool to aid them in their journey ahead, not a goal in and of itself. Another aspect of accolades is that they function like a checklist, not an instruction manual. The party should be able to complete the tasks in any order. This can be further developed in your own campaign by spreading out locations to visit in order to complete an accolade with prominent plot-related sites nearby each and a crossroads encounter that allows your party to choose where they want to go regarding the main storyline of the campaign. But what happens when a party reaches a location required to complete an accolade? Is that all they need to do? Probably not. Accolades should be significant rewards for the player characters, but I'll go into those details later. The point is that each location or task should be a mini-quest or challenge into itself. Back to the Hotchberg Pilgrimage, the first statue the party visited was within a Kuotoa village, and while the fish folk were not hostile to the PCs, they still had to deal with a civil war forming within the tribe. The second statue they reached was overrun by cannibalistic grimlocks, while the third was lost within an underground sea and guarded by a popular water elemental. 
Say hi, Delta. Checking off a box for each task of an accolade may seem simple at first, but getting to the location specified by that task or performing the task itself may come with unforeseen obstacles. As a game master, figure out what makes sense to challenge your player characters in each of these circumstances in order to give them the satisfaction that comes with earning an accolade. Earning an accolade should be a multi-pronged endeavor for the players, and the reward should match the effort put into it. In games like D&D, where an ability score improvement is significant but attainable, an accolade should include such an improvement for each party member who participates in the full process. Consider what is most valued by the gods, entities, or fundamental forces of nature that are rewarding these adventures for their dedicated work and use that to determine which attribute to improve. Other rewards might include an increase or proficiency with a certain skill, tool, or language. Again, think about what the entity values and choose accordingly. For the Hotchberg pilgrimage, the dwarven gods wanted the traditions of their people to be shared and thus granted proficiency with the history skill and knowledge of the dwarven language. You can also include class features, limited use spells, or monster abilities as part of your accolade reward. Perhaps Groomsh, god of the orcs, allowed a devoted follower the ability to rage once per day after earning an accolade to the war god. The Kyren of the elemental plane of air could grant the ability to feather fall, or even nature itself could bestow the ability to wild shape. A quick perusal of the player's handbook or monster manual should give you plenty of ideas with an equal dose of creativity available from source books and other games. The possibilities are endless. That does it for this episode. If you're looking to give your players a worthwhile reward for delving into the lore of your campaign world and facing the challenges within, accolades can be a great tool to fill that desire. Until next time, I'm David Watches, I'm the Paul Man DF. Get in here, Delta. You were in this episode, too. And thanks for watching. Special thanks to my longtime friend, Bill Batchelor, for creating the logo for this channel, and to Dylan Smith for the character art used in this and other videos. I couldn't have done it without them. I also want to thank my player, Fang, for voicing the Fairy Noble in this episode. To learn more about Fang's character, Scourge Featherfur, and our ongoing Broken Chain campaign, check the playlist in the description below. For more gaming tips, check out these hot videos.